my name is Heidi. I've run a YouTube channel called Crypto Tips since 2016. I've actually been invested in and involved with cryptocurrencies since 2014. I'm really interested in really why they were created and the much more on the fundamental side and the long-term outlook of this whole space and where it could go in the future. What are the cryptocurrencies in your portfolio right now? There's a few. <laughs> um, probably have about 20 to 30, um, but more heavily weighted in what I think are the long-term, more viably successful cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example. Um, also holding coins like Cardano and Chainlink and um Solana has been a great performer this past uh, summer, actually. Uh, yeah, there, there's several um, and for different reasons. But, you know, depending on what cycle of the market we're in, that's when I choose uh, to go into different coins for different reasons. How much money should one have uh, to start investing in cryptocurrencies? What is a good amount to trade the waters? I think the best amount is obviously going to be different for every person. The most important thing to understand is that you're investing an amount that you are, that you can afford to lose. Um, that means that you're not taking out a second mortgage on your house or taking out a huge loan that you can't repay to, pay, to buy cryptocurrencies. Um, you need to understand what your budget is, what you have coming in, what you can afford to invest in. Um, this kind of extra thing that is cryptocurrencies because it is a very volatile market. And especially if you're new to cryptocurrencies and you don't know the bigger picture or, you know, uh, any possible risks of the coin that you're interested in and a huge price dip happens and you don't know any better, you could sell at a loss. And so you will have lost money. And the reason being it, it's really important that you're investing money that you can afford to lose is that ideally you would just let it ride and see what it does in the longer term. Um, I think that's, that's the best way for any newcomer to become exposed just to get their feet wet in cryptocurrency, because as much as you would like to invest before or to, to educate yourself as best you can on the coin before you invest, usually it's not until you have, uh, skin in the game, you have money in that investment, you're going to be all the more uh, inclined to learn more about it and be more mentally invested in it as well. I believe it was 2016 or 17 where there was a lot of initial coin offering ICOs on the market. How is ICO market doing today? Are companies releasing their new coins? Uh, a lot of them. How do you feel that activity is going? Are there still a lot of ICOs or it's subsided? That's a good question. There's a lot of the ICOs that were, you know, launched in 2016, 2017 that aren't, that never actually came out with a product. Um, and so for those who invested early in it and took profits while they did, they did well. But for those who were thinking it was going to be a long-term thing, sometimes they're still holding those coins and, and it's not doing anything. No one's actually using that coin or trading it. Um, the concept of ICOs has evolved since then for sure it's gone from what's called the icos to um things like ieos uh initial exchange offerings where these coins are actually partnering with big cryptocurrency exchanges like binance for example and binance then you know uh offers to list that coin offers to market it to those people who are using it so it's kind of a, a platform like that um and also there was these um now there's, there's, you know, uh, DeFi and NFTs. So it's not the same concept, but it's very similar where people are creating these new things and it's kind of hyped up and uh, a lot of money is getting poured into this new aspect of investing in cryptocurrencies. Um, so they're still around. Uh, it's definitely not quite like it was in 2016, 2017, because how, how else is this space has evolved is that we're seeing real utility with these other coins that do currently exist. And so now for any new coin that is being listed, they're kind of up against that competition of these user bases that other coins, like for example, Chainlink, 
Solana, uh, Atom, Luna. These have real use cases, real users that are using their platform, using their exchanges, uh, their DeFi platforms, their smart contracts. And so it's a much more developed crypto space now than it was in 2017. And yeah, so it, it's still around this whole concept of creating new coins is still here, but it's definitely not as it's not as much of a wild west as it was in 2016. For example, on Coinbase, how many listed uh, different digital assets are there? Actually, I think there's about 13,000 cryptocurrencies that currently exist. Um, the, the amount that are listed on a US-based exchange like Coinbase is much limited, much more limited. Um, probably 50 of those are probably on Coinbase, 50 to 100, I would say. It's not, it's not a big, maybe not even that. I don't think it's even 100. It's probably 50 or less um, on Coinbase just because they are a US-based exchange and they must cap, they're going to worry about if they're listing um, a security. Uh, like what they're saying with XRP actually is a, a good example of that. So um, the amount of cryptocurrencies that exist versus those that are listed on these really popular exchanges is very different. Which exchanges do you prefer? You know, Binance is a really helpful exchange. It isn't based in the U.S. Um, they've gotten away with that for a long time, but we're seeing these regulators are starting to clamp down on Binance again. Um, but that being said, they do list a, a large number of cryptocurrencies if you're not a U.S. citizen. Um, so for me, that one's been very helpful. And they have a lot of other tools for earning passive income on that platform as well. Um, another good one that I can recommend also for U.S. citizens is Kraken. Um, dot com. That's, a, in my opinion, a very secure and well, repu uh, very reputable uh, centralized exchange. It's based in the U.S. And I think I like them because they're very transparent about their security practices. They have a very good help desk for those of you who want to talk to someone. And they also have uh, a lot of educational information on their website as well, which I think is great. As far as uh, taxation goes, I assume different countries have different taxation laws. How it is now for U.S. citizens is if you buy cryptocurrencies, that is not a taxable event. If you trade a cryptocurrency for another cryptocurrency, for example, if you're going to buy Bitcoin, if, you're, if you have Bitcoin and you're going to trade that Bitcoin for, say, Ethereum or for a stable coin like USDT, which is Tether, that is a taxable event. Um, if you're going to sell your Bitcoin into the US dollar, that is also a taxable event. Um, the only thing that's not a taxable event is when you're actually buying Bitcoin. So a common way for people to accumulate their position in cryptocurrency is called dollar cost averaging. So that's when people pretty much set a budget and they're just slowly every day, every week, what have you, they're putting $10 towards buying Bitcoin or whatever their budget is good with. And so each time you're buying, that's not a taxable event. It's when you're going to be selling that coin, exiting that position and buying another one or exiting Bitcoin and, and sending that money back into your bank. Um, those are all tax. And also there's, uh, you know, there's a short term capital gains tax and there's also long term capital gains tax. So basically, if you're holding, if you buy Bitcoin and a year at least has passed, then you have a depreciated uh, tax to pay on that rather than if you were to sell before then. What is your opinion of Robinhood as a platform for digital currency? I don't have the most positive opinion of Robinhood in general with their interactions with cryptocurrencies, mainly because if you buy Bitcoin on Robinhood, you cannot take that Bitcoin off of the application and store it in a wallet that you control. Um, basically, Robin, Robinhood is the one who is the custodian of all Bitcoin that is changing hands on that platform. And that's also the case with platforms like Coinbase or Binance. But the difference is that those platforms, Binance and Coinbase, allow you to withdraw those coins and to store them in a way that guarantees your full ownership of that coin. Um, so for those people who are interested in holding their Bitcoin for a very, very long time, um, if you keep it on Robinhood or if you buy Bitcoin on Robinhood, 
your ownership of that Bitcoin is dependent on how long Robinhood will exist. Um, I'm sure it's very user friendly and it's very easy to make trades on, on Robinhood, which is great for people. But basically, the, the only thing you're doing on that is speculating on the price because you're not actually owning it. I think that's a really important fact to, to have people be aware of. Thank you. I understand. Since we're talking about wallet, uh, what are the preferred wa wallets that uh, you dealt with? What would you recommend to people? Sure. Um, I recommend hardware wallets. Um, that's what I think every crypto professional or crypto enthusiast is going to say is a hardware wallet is an excellent option. Um, I use most, I use ledger hardware wallets, um, just because as if you advance in your, your, uh, journey in cryptocurrency and you're going to use things like DeFi or decentralized exchanges, this hardware wallet, a lot has integrated with a lot of different platforms. So for me, hardware wallets is a device that very much securely holds your cryptocurrencies. And I've done many tutorials on how to do it all the right ways to protect your security. Um, but for me, for ledger wallets, at least, it's a usually there, there's a, a trade off with security and user friendliness. And for me, the ledger hardware wallet is the best option out there right now for compromising on neither of those. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely. Definitely uh, invest your time in learning how to use a hardware wallet. Typical security trading in the United States has a notion of a broker, someone who advises you, who holds your securities. Uh, is there a similar similarity in cryptocurrency trading, things like the broker who advises people? How much do they charge for their services? How does it work? I'm going to be honest. I'm really not that familiar with these types of brokerage options, just because, again, with my interest in this cryptocurrency space, it is how to uh, take the middlemen out of your involvement and out of your investments. And so also just because purely usually, especially with cryptocurrencies, the people who try to make you feel like you can't do it yourself, you need them to do it. They, it can be very scammy. Um, and so I think I think that buying cryptocurrencies is something that is at the fingertips of anyone who wants to do it. It's unlike the stock market where you don't have to open a brokerage account like TD Ameritrade or or anything like that. You can open your own account on Binance or on whatever exchange that you want to use and you can just make the make the purchase right there. Um, so, yeah, I I. I, if I did know anything about those brokerages, I don't think I would be recommending them just because of the risk of it being either a scam because number one, they know that you don't know anything about it. And um, there's a lot of wiggle room for them to get away with uh, skimming off the top or just taking your coins all together. Because that's another thing with cryptocurrencies is it is very easy for scam artists to take your coins and that's it. Um, it's not the same as like bank transfers where necessarily their identity is connected to whatever money is coming and going. Uh, cryptocurrency makes it very easy for them to just cut and run. So um, try to take out the middlemen. What are the typical scams that you've run in your eight year career that could happen? What shall we warn our consumers about? So what shall they know about cryptocurrencies? What kind of scams? Unfortunately, um, they are on all levels of, of your involvement in cryptocurrencies. But the good thing is that once you're able to spot them and understand how to find them, they're very easy to find and to avoid. Um, on the higher level of cryptocurrencies, the scams can be uh, people are launching a new coin and um, you know, they get these new investors and then they never launch the coin or they launch the coin and then they're the major holders of that coin and they just sell them all in the market and your coin price plummets. Really obvious sign that it's a scam is when someone is contacting you claiming to be either a, I have many people trying to impersonate me on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube. And they're imitating a lot of different YouTubers or people in the public eye with crypto. And they're contacting you with a special investment. And they're, you know, 
Uh, it's a secret and they're only contacting certain people, whether they have a trading bot that's guaranteeing returns or it's a mining operation and you can invest or it's a, a new project or something that they're working on. <clears throat> the number one red flag is, are they contacting you? That's easy. It's a scam. Uh, very easy. <laughs> Most people who are successful in cryptocurrency and are in the public eye are very busy and they're not going to be individually messaging people. They might uh, make a video about it. So basically, my face and my voice is not saying these things. It's not me. It's someone else impersonating me. Um, but uh, so that's that's number one. Also, um, Another form of scam that's very common with cryptocurrencies is uh, if you're dealing with, let's say, a ledger hardware wallet or a wallet that you control, a very common phrase in cryptocurrencies is not your keys, not your coins. And that's referring to the way that you secure your cryptocurrency investments. And that is involving a private key. The thing with the private key is whoever has access to that key, has access to withdraw those coins. So there are people who create things called phishing attacks where they might send you an email with a bad link and then they contact you for whatever reason. Or if you are actually reaching, you're trying to reach out to the support team of let's say a wallet provider. And usually they, if, if you Google it and it's the first thing listed, it's an advertisement and it's scammy. Um, or if you're talking to someone in a telegram group is actually very common for scam artists. But basically, as you're talking to a scam artist, the number one thing you should never, ever, ever give out is your private key. And if anyone is asking you to give them your private key, they will take your coins and they will never give it back to you. It is not a legitimate site. It's not a legitimate anything. It's a scam. So those are really easy red flags to identify. And uh, if you can avoid those, you will be far better off in this space. My recommendation is to, if you're invested right now in cryptocurrencies and you're feeling nervous or just unsure of what it is you actually invested in, what, what aren't you understanding that all these other people who seem to be very confident in their investments, what do they know that you don't? Um, the number one thing that you should start looking into is why cryptocurrencies were existed or were, were created. Um, look at the cypherpunk movement. Um, also, keep in mind a long-term perspective. Uh, if, you're, if you're only able to invest for a very short period of time, chances are you're going to be trying to make uh, shortcuts to get profits in cryptocurrencies and very, very, very likely that you will lose money that way. So be conservative, uh, have a long-term outlook, and uh, educate yourself along the way. And I think you will be benefiting in many more ways than one with that. Heidi, I would like to thank you for your time.